Good morning. This is a day that the Lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it for God is good all the time and all the time God is good. We want to thank you once again for joining us on another beautiful and glorious Sunday morning that God has allowed us to see. It's the sun is out and it's shining. It's going to be a warm day today and we thank God for it. We thank him for all the many blessings and all the benefits that he has bestowed upon us. And now let us get into the word that God has for us. We're looking at Job chapter 42, verses 12 through 16. Again, that's Job chapter 42, verses 12 through 15. And it reads, So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a 1,000 yoke of oxen and a 1,000 she-asses. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jamil. And the name of the second was Kezai. And the name of the third was Kareem Hapuch. And in all the land where no woman, where no women, where no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this lived Job a hundred and forty years. And he saw his sons and his son's sons, even four generations. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you and we praise you for another glorious opportunity, Lord God, to share with your people on this Sunday morning the word that you have blessed us with. And we pray, oh God, that you will bless this word to be just what you would have for it to be. Lord, we ask you to, as always, hide us behind the cross, oh God, they will only hear and see you, that you will get the glory, the honor, and the praises, Lord, out of everything that is said and done here, Father. Father God, we pray that you will bless this word to go out and accomplish that which you sent it out to accomplish, O oh God, and it will not return void. Bless our time here, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to talk to you for a little while from the subject, when the dust settles. When the dust settles. In life, we experience some things that we think we will never come through. I mean, some unexpected stuff that shakes you right down to the core. Some of us have dealt with sickness that was so bad that we thought we were never going to get well. But when the dust settled and the sickness was over, the problem or the issue was over, you could look back and say, I came through it all right. Because God's got more medicine in the hem of his garment than all the doctors in the world. He specializes in things that are impossible and he can fix anything that you're going through. There are times when our money gets funny and our change gets strange and we don't know how we are going to pay our bills. But the Bible says that if we look to the hills from which come as our help, all of our help comes from the Lord. All of our help comes from him. He takes care of it all. God can and will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. No matter what it looks like, seems like, feels like, God can and will make a way out of nowhere. I guess some of you may be wondering right now, how did he come up with this title, When the Dust Settled? Well, I ask you to just ride with me for a little while, and I'll tell you all about it. So when we look at the book of Job, we see a man that was perfect and upright and very wealthy. But a life storm began to brew in his life, and it settled on him and his family. If you read Job 1, 6 through 12, it'll tell you how the life storm got started. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, which cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down it, and the Lord said unto Satan, Have thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God of not for not? Has not thou made an hedge about him and his house, and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is an increase in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he had, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself 
put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And after this conversation between God and Satan, the storm got started. And the storm got worse, but Job held on to his faith. He lost so much because of this life storm. Job lost his cattle, he lost his children, and in so many words, he really did lose his wife. And after all of this, his health began to fail. He had sores all over his body. Even his so-called friends came by and were not any help at all. It's amazing to me that how when we're going through stuff, people can stop by, people can call, and they just seem not to get what's really going on. It's like they just can't comprehend that I'm really going through something right now. I'm really dealing with some things. But we have to understand that sometimes the haters, the caters, and the debaters are sent for a reason. They're doing their job. They sent to try to stir the pot just a little bit more. They're sent to try to make things a little bit worse on you. But I promise you, if you keep on holding on to God's unchanging hand, God will turn those things around. When the dust settles, all of that stuff will be out of the way. He says, as we go on a little bit further, but as you keep reading the story, you see that the life storm got so bad for Job that Job even cursed the day he was born. Has stuff ever gotten so bad in your life that you just look, I just, I feel like giving up. I can't do it anymore. I can't live like this no more. I'm tired of it. But I understand and know that even in the midst of all that, you still got to understand that God is still in control. God still has everything under control. All you got to do is step back and let him move. Step back and let him work. If you do that, God will work it out for you. But in the midst of the storm, he knew God would bring him out. That's why he said in Job 13 and 15, he said, though you slay me, yet will I trust him. And in Job 14 and 14, Job comes right back and says, out of all of my appointed time, I will wait till my change come. Basically, he was saying, I don't know when, I don't know how, and I don't know where, but I do know this, God will bring me out of this. All I got to do is just call on him. All I got to do is just put it in his hand. Just like the three Hebrew boys, they knew that God would deliver them. They were in a fiery furnace. Sometimes it gets so hot in your furnace that it feels like you're going to faint. But don't because help is on the way. In the midst of your fiery storm, God will come to your rescue. Just like he did for Daniel when he was down in the lion's den. Daniel couldn't give up when he was put in the lion's den, but he held on to his faith. Job, Daniel, and the three Hebrew boys all knew that when the dust settled, everything was going to be all right. When it seems like the storm is too much, the fire is too hot, and the enemies are on your back, just look to the hills because God got everything covered. I know it seems dark, and I know it's cloudy all around you, but just remember, God is your light in the midst of your darkness. That's why I love that song where it said, he's a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You're everything I need. All I got to do is just call on you. All I got to do is just hold fast in the midst of the storm. If I anchor down in your word, you showed me and told me, all I got to do is just anchor down, buckle down in the word, and you will take care of it all. God is that light that we need in the midst of our darkness. You, can't, you may can't see your way out, or you can't feel your way out right now. But when the dust settles, you'll be able to look back and see where the Lord has brought you from. When they threw the boys in the extremely hot fire furnace, they called on God and he cooled the flames. When Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, he called on God and he locked the lion's jaw. When Job was going through the life storm, God kept him covered. The Bible tells us that weeping may endure for a night. Glory be to God, but there's some joy that comes in the morning. You might be going through right now and everything is like a tornado in your life. It's tearing up everything in your path. Your mind is messed up. Your heart is perplexed. Your body has been stricken with pain. But I stopped by to tell you, I know a man that can deal with the physical as well as the spiritual. Just like I told you on last Sunday when that woman went down to that well, she was looking for one thing, but she come back with something else. She said, come meet a man that told me about everything that I ever been through. Come meet a man that changed everything in my life. 
I stopped by to tell you he is a miracle worker. So when the dust settled and the fire and the Hebrew boy came out of the fiery furnace without a scratch, when the dust settled, Daniel came out with no harm. When the dust settled, Job came out with more than he had in the first place. When the dust settled, they could look back and say, I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> Glory be to God. Is there anybody that can say, I've been through some rough times in my life. I've been through some issues in my life, but I don't look like what I've been through. Glory be to God. I feel my help coming on right here. I don't look like what I've been through. I don't look like the problems that I used to have. I, I don't look like the situations that I've been through. I don't look like the struggles that I've had. Why? Because the Bible said, when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. He says, I don't look like all of that. What I went through, it didn't take me out. What I went through, it didn't take me over. I wasn't burned up in the fire. I wasn't eaten up by the enemies and I didn't get washed away in the life storm. But when the dust settled, I came out. All right. Won't he do it? God will bring you through the fire. God will bring you through the storm and rain. When the dust settles, I promise you that everything will be all right. You can look back and say, I made it. Glory be to God. I'm so glad that I don't look like what I've been through. If anybody knows my story, I don't look like what I've been through. I understand you say, well, Reverend McNeil, you still on a cane. It does not matter because at this time I could have been dead and gone sleeping in my grave, but I serve a God that's got all power in his hand. And he said, not right now. I got a little bit more for you to do. He said, not right now. I got some more lives. I need to change through you. I got some more things that I want done and I got some work for you to do. I don't smell like what I've been through. I don't act like what I've been through. I don't even seem like I experienced a lot of the things that I've been through. Glory be to God. But I thank God for his healing power. I thank God for his delivering power. I thank God for being a way maker in my life. He didn't have to do it, but he did. it, And I'm so glad about it. I'm so glad. That when the dust settled, I can look back and say, he brought me over. He brought me through. He brought me out of it. Some folks don't understand. If you stop in the midst of your storm, you'll never get to the end of it. The dust will still be all around you. The problems will still be all around you. The haters and the caters and the debaters will still be floating all around you. But if you keep pressing on through the storm, the Bible says, I press toward the mark for the pride of the high calling that's in Christ Jesus. In other words, I'm going to keep on pushing. No matter how rough it gets, no matter how hard it gets, I'm going to keep on pushing because I want to be able to say, when the dust settled, God paid all my bills. When the dust settled, he healed my body. When the dust settled, he delivered me from depression. When the dust settled, he delivered me from my anger issue. When the dust settled, he delivered me from folk. And I didn't have to deal with all of that thing anymore. Well, the clock on the wall says uh, that's all. It's been real fun, but Reverend McNeil got to run. See you later, alligator. And after a while, crocodile. But if you don't mind, I think I'll tell you a little Mississippi story. And I'm going to get on out of here. There was a little girl and her daddy that were traveling. And they were on their way home. And a storm began to brew. And as the rain began to fall, the girl was driving and she looked at her daddy and she said, Daddy, should we pull over? And the daddy said, no, just keep on driving. And as they kept on driving, the thunder began to roll and the lightning began to flash and the rain began to come down a little bit harder. And the girl said, Daddy, it's getting a little harder to see. And there's lightning flashing and the thunder is rolling. I think we ought to pull over. The daddy told us, no, baby, keep on pressing. And then it seemed like that everything got worse and it got so bad that she couldn't even see the road. And she said, Daddy, I believe we really need to pull over because I, I can't even see the lines in the road anymore. And the rain is coming down so hard. The daddy said, just press on a little bit far. So when they pressed on and they got on the other side of the storm, the daddy told her, just pull over here on the side of the road. And, and he said, get out. And, and the little girl said, Daddy, why are we pulling over now? The daddy said, the reason why we're pulling over now, he said, look back. If you look at all those cars that are pulled over in the midst of the storm, 
they're still there. But because we press on and when the dust settle, we turn around and we can see where the Lord has brought us from. Great God Almighty, I don't know about nobody else. I, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But I stopped by to tell you that keep on pressing through your storm. Keep on pressing through your tears. Keep on pressing through your pain. Because I promise you that when the dust settles, everything will be all right. When the dust settles, you will look back and say it was God that brought me over. It was God that brought me through. Can I get a witness? It was God that delivered me. It was God that opened that door for me. It was God that provided that job for me. It was God that kept a roof over my head. It was God that when my enemies came in to destroy me. God lifted up a standard and he moved them right out of the way. I feel like preaching this morning because I know what the Lord will do. I tried him and I've seen him work. I've seen him do things that people thought would never be done. I've seen him work in people that folk never thought he could use. But look at me, he used me when I wanted to give up on myself, when I wanted to turn around and say I can't do it. God said, yes, you can, because I called you and I commissioned you to do just what I want you to do. So I want to help somebody this morning that's going through, whether you're troubled in your mind or you're troubled in your home or you're troubled on your job or your, your change looks strange. I, I want you to know that this is just a test that you're going through. This is just a little trial that you're going through. And sometimes when we're going through these things, God is trying to get our attention. God is trying to show us some things that we can't make it without him. We can't get through anything without him. And because of that, we got to understand and know that he has it all in control. You say, Rem McNeil, you just don't understand how long I've been through it. It really doesn't matter how long you've been through it. But there's a God that can and will deliver. The woman with the issue of blood had been bleeding all those years. But God worked it out. When she came in contact with him, he healed her body. And it didn't matter how long she had been through it. Immediately, everything was made all right. So I stopped by to tell you, when the dust settles, you'll be able to smile. When the dust settles, you have joy, unspeakable joy. But I want you to know, shout in the midst of your storm before you get the end of it. Because when you come out of it, you really will have a reason to shout. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for believing God with us. And we thank you, oh God, for the word that you have blessed us with. Have a blessed and wonderful day.